dynamic range of a digital camera. It is something you can measure yourself at home. It is very simple. But before we do so, uh, we need to have a little chat about what the dynamic range uh, is. Uh, a lot of people talk about it, and when you're amongst photographers, they either talk about the dynamic range of how many megapixels the sensor has, or how many bits the camera has. And that together defines how good or how bad the camera is. Well, I'm going to focus right now in this video on the dynamic range. Now, what is the dynamic range? Well, the dynamic range is very simple. It's the ability of the electronics in your camera, the sensor, to capture details in the highlights and details in the darks. You can imagine that one day you're on the street and it's a very sunny day and you have buildings that are painted white with a nice structure on it. And then you have also deep shadows in an alley next to the building where the sun, where the sun doesn't come in. And yet you want to have sufficient details in the white structure of the building and in the deep shadows of the alley. Now, with some cameras, you will succeed. With other cameras, you will not succeed, just because your camera is not able to reach that wide range of light from very bright to very dark. If you don't have enough dynamic stops, or your dynamic range isn't big enough, then you cannot capture it. And that's why it's so important to know what is your dynamic range of your camera, so you can adjust your exposure properly. Now, the dynamic range is expressed in stops. And a stop is either doubling the light or halving the light. For instance, if I have a shutter speed of 125th of a second, then a stop down is 160th of a second, meaning twice the amount of light, because now my shutter is twice the time open. And the same thing can be done with the aperture. If you're shooting at a f10, let's say, and then you double that up to an f20, then actually you deduce the light with half. And that's a bit how that goes. So you can adjust either way. But that's not the point of the discussion here. So what we're gonna do now is look at how you can measure the actual dynamic range of your own camera. And it's very simple. You will need to have your camera on a tripod, so then you need to have a gray card on the other side, and a gray card is your main tool. A gray card is 18% gray, and that's what you're going to need to do proper light measurement, because your camera is actually calibrated for 18% gray, and your internal light meter will actually trigger on that. But I'll talk about this more later. And you also need a program uh, like Lightroom or something like that, where you can do some tether shooting, um, and then you can see uh, what it is. So. I have already adjusted my camera uh, to the proper uh, exposure and, a, and I focused only on the gray card. And if you're only focused on the gray card, then you could see that the peak in the histogram, and the histogram is the curve on the screen right here, um, it actually shows that the peak is in the middle. And 18% gray are the midtones, and that's what you see. It should be right in the middle, meaning you have the correct exposure of dynamic range, then I should be able to take pictures all seven stops down and seven stops up from that middle point. So what I will be doing is actually decreasing or increasing my shutter speed and then we'll be looking at the histogram uh, what is happening. All right, so um, we open up Lightroom and then in Lightroom you can actually start Tattooed capturing, and I'm going to use that because then I can show you exactly what I mean. And we start the session. The camera is connected, and I already have uh, adjusted the camera to a shutter speed of 1 40th of a second and an f8. So I'll take the first shot, and it's important that we only look at the gray card. So I will start uh, cutting out some stuff first. So I will correct the white balance and then. Um, I will zoom in to the only the gray part because it's only the 18% gray of the gray card, uh, which is actually um, what we are interested in. And as you can see now on the histogram, I have my um, peak uh, right in the middle, which means the midtones, and that refers to 18% gray. So now what we'll do is we'll continue by stopping or up or down the camera setting 
by adjusting the shutter speed. So that's the first thing we'll do and then every time uh, we'll take a picture and then you'll see what happens with the histogram. So that's our first step. And now the shutter speed is now 1 80th of a second, so meaning we have less exposure and we take the shot. And as you can see, um, when the picture came in, uh, it got darker and the peak in the histogram has now moved to the left. Uh, for all clarity, a histogram um, is a graph where on the left you have the darks, the blacks, and on the extreme right uh, you have the whites or the highlights. If the peak falls outside either side of this uh, curve, then it's on this side underexposed and on the right hand side overexposed. No matter what, if it's over or underexposed, these are the times when you lose detail. So, this is still well within, so we'll do the next one. So now we should go to 160th of a second. And we will shoot. So now we are 160 of a second, which is a double or half the time. We shoot and notice that the peak in the actual histogram has moved again more to the left. We'll do now the same thing all over again. One more stop. And then we are at one. 320 of a second as you can see here we take the shot and the peak will move even more to the left as you can see now we are here so we do it one more time you probably see me counting three times because my camera works in one-third of a stop so you always have to do a full stop so I have to do three changes so now my camera is set to uh, 640, 1 640 of a second and the peak has moved off even more. We'll do it one more time and now my shutter speed should move to 1 hundredths of a second. We shoot. And guess what? The peak is even more to the left, but we're still okay. We still have no blue marks on the screen because if the peak goes off the screen, you will see blue marks. So now we go to one two thousand and five hundredths of a second, halving the light again. And now we start seeing a little bit of loss, not much, but we can take it one more step. And we shoot. Now this is one five thousandths of a second. And now we're getting almost off. I can see blue spots appearing on the screen. So here I'm at really at the edge uh, of where I, uh, should be I shouldn't go any further but I will take one more step just to show you <clears throat> and we will take a shot and you'll see more blue marks coming up now so basically I don't know if you can see it but all these blue little dots means I've lost information so we reached the edge so how many dynamic uh, stops do I have now from my mid-tones to my blacks on this camera? Well, you can count, right? So this was my mid-tone. And then I moved one step up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight well eight is actually um a bit over the top so actually it's around seven and even the seven is having a few marks so i have seven 
stops downwards. Now we can do the same thing all over again uh, for the upward part and then we know the total amount. Okay, so I readjusted the camera so we are back to one thirtieth of a second and our histogram uh, is nice in the middle which is reflecting 18% grey. Don't mind those three shots here because those uh, were just adjustments I did to get the camera back uh, in the middle position of the histogram. So now we'll start to increase uh, basically the exposure time by uh, lowering the shutter and then we should see the pulse moving to the right. So let's do that. So that's the first stop. So now I should be at 1 15th of a second. We take a shot and we should notice that now uh, the picture has become far more bright and our peak has moved to the right. So we do the same thing all over again. One eighth of a second and we'll see the peak moving again. We do it one more time and then we shoot. Now it's one fourth of a second. And the peak goes off again. So now we go to half a second. And you can hear it on the camera now. It's the shutter time stays open a bit longer. And the peak goes even more off, but it still doesn't alarm out. So we can do one more. Now it's one second. Now let's see what happens. Oops, now we got a red color. So basically um, what we can now do is count. So as of this point, I had actually one, two, three, four, five, and then I had six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, about 13 uh, dynamic stops up and down uh, on this camera. So I'm just gonna toggle it back so you can actually see what happens on the histogram. So this is really at over the edge, as you can see, it's completely red and it's red because it's overexposed. As you can see, it's just white and the red is just a warning color. So that one doesn't really count. Uh, I could just reduce it with one third of a stop and take a new shot. That might actually bring it back a little bit. Yeah, you can see some white spots happening, but basically, um, now I'm working with thirds, so we'll do one more shot, but I don't think uh, it's going to pull it. Yeah, okay, so, all right. So basically, uh, if we're looking at the camera, really, um, this is what it should be. So highlights, so this is one stop. Let me go one down. That's another stop. Look at the uh, histogram. We go one more stop down. One more. Now that's already uh, four stops, five stops, then six stops, seven stops, eight stops, nine stops, ten, eleven, and twelve. And I think that's about it, 12 and a little bit. So this is about 13.3 dynamic stops. So what we were able to count on the screen was actually 13.13 of a stop of dynamic range before we lose information uh, in the highlights or in the darks. And if you double check the D800E specifications uh, on the internet, then you will find that this camera has actually 13.8 uh, or 14 uh, dynamic stops uh, for its dynamic range. And you can test this with any camera. It doesn't matter which one, 
but as long as you do this kind of a setup. Now remember, you have to shoot in RAW and manual mode because none of the other things will work and I forgot to mention that at the beginning. So thank you for viewing and I hope this was a bit inspiring on how you could check your own camera. In my next video, I will talk about why you want to know your dynamic range and how you can actually play with it in the field. Thank you for viewing.